So the fight that was supposed to be occurring in early February, I think maybe the third or something like that, for the vacant WBO 130-pound title between Emmanuel Navarrete and Oscar Valdez, was pushed back and is now being held for Emmanuel Navarrete's first defense of the WBO 130-pound title. Navarrete since won the WBO title against Liam Wilson after Valdez pulled out of the fight. He stepped into the ring and, and declared that he was going to... Uh, and basically declared that the matchup was all uh, sealed. Valdez uh, was then made to have an interim fight on the undercard of Lomachenko versus Haney. He fought against Adam Lopez and in a somewhat lackluster performance was able to win a rather comfortable unanimous decision as Lopez kind of came to spoil. Uh, definitely showed that he was past his best. Doesn't have nearly the confidence in his abilities to take punches that he used to have. He attempted similar tactics except without the authoritativeness he had in the first fight and he ended up just coming up short and losing a wide UD. But Valdez, nevertheless, is going to finally get an opportunity, or another opportunity at the WBO 130 pound title. Valdez, I believe, is the more decorated fighter of the two. Uh, Navarrete has more belts in his career. He is a three-weight world champion. But I do think his opposition that he's fought uh, on en route to becoming a three-division champion is rather lackluster. If you examine his opponents at 130 pounds, his best opponents were guys like Jose San Martin. Uh, he won the belt off Isaac Dogbe. And he was fighting the likes of uh, Hale Santissimo and people like that afterwards in title defenses, but he did remain relatively active. Uh, he fought, I think it was Fallon Zuela, somebody like that in between uh, his his final defense against Santissima on the Wilder Fury 2 undercard and his eventual title shot on October the th 9th of 2020 against, it was uh, Ruben Villa. is a good fighter, probably Maybe even the best victory of Navarrete's career when you consider the fact that Villa was able to match up to him in size a bit and was a difficult style matchup for him. Navarrete seemed to get to Villa early on. He was pretty dominant in the early rounds, but Villa crawled his way back into the fight and made it very competitive and somewhat close down the stretch and actually was able to take it to a reasonably close unanimous decision. On, I believe, one or two of the judges' scorecards, they had it, I believe, 114 to 112 for Navarrete, meaning six rounds apiece and uh, the two knockdowns Navarrete scored in the early rounds of the fight made the difference. He would go on to make defenses against the likes of Christopher Diaz. Uh, Christopher Diaz, uh, Joette Gonzalez, people like that. And then he would go up to 130 pounds uh, after he ended up I, I think seeking after the Shakur Stevenson fight, he wanted that fight. He moved up to become the WBO mandatory. Uh, the WBO obviously has a rule which allows champions to go up and immediately become mandatories for uh, eventual or current champions in the divisions above, and Navarrete exercised that rule. Valdez was the number one ranked in the WBO uh, as he had just attempted a unification and failed against Shakur Stevenson. Stevenson vacated the belts, moved up, and that opened up the floodgates for this matchup to occur. Valdez in his career has fought the superior opposition because he's fought guys like Mariaga. Uh, when Mariaga was at least closer to his peak, he's fought guys like Scott Quigg. Uh, when Scott Quigg was a little bit past his peak, but still relatively close, he had a tremendous fight with him. He's moved up to 130 pounds and since had fights uh, with guys like... He's had two wins against Adam Lopez, the first being relatively controversial due to the stoppage. And he's also had victories over... Uh, Conceição, at least officially, Miguel Burchelt, who was the reigning number one fighter in the division, but definitely showed that the weight cut was getting to him, and in the fight afterwards, kind of demonstrated that he's probably shot uh, against uh, Nakathila, and he lost to Shakur Stevenson in the unification. Rematch Lopez and was the victor in a more decisive fight. Adam Lopez, though, has seemed to decline since the first fight, though, and that must be demonstrated because he was dropped and beaten in dominant fashion against Abraham Nova, who is really not supposed to be as dominant as he was against him. Nova a decent fighter, though. 
Uh, but that struggled as well against guys like Avery Sparrow. Wasn't isn't really the highest level fighter, but not too bad. But Lopez shouldn't be getting beat up the way he was against him. But Navarrete and Valdez are fighting. I think both of these guys are pretty flawed fighters <clears throat> in regards to their style of fighting. Navarrete for different reasons. I think Navarrete can box in more ways. I think he's not as one-dimensional as Valdez. He can box a little bit on the move. He can use his jab. You know, he, he pressures pretty effectively. He can fight if relatively effectively at all ranges, long, mid, and close range. But he's very defensively irresponsible. His technique in regards to how he throws his punches, he's extremely deliberate. Uh, he throws all of his punches with extreme force. He commits to all of his shots. He lunges with his punches. He's a guy who's fundamentally does not fight to the book. And while that was very effective in overwhelming and overpowering guys of lower weight, such as Isaac Dogbe, who is a you know a small guy, five foot two at 122 pounds, uh, that has not been as effective going up through the weights because a guy like Joe Gonzalez was able to touch up Navarrete much of the time in their fight. Even though he got his face busted up, he was not as physically intimidated of Navarrete as say somebody like a dog by whom he lost to. But because of the fact that he was bigger, he was able to stand up to him a little bit more. Then you go into his other fights. Diaz got overwhelmed for sure. But at 130 pounds, the guy he challenged uh, for the vacant WBO title, uh, Liam Wilson, himself is a limited fighter with a good punch. He has a knockout victory over Joe Noyne, who beat him in the first fight. Noyne is a pretty solid fighter. Uh, uh, you know, a gatekeeper. He was able to take Kenichi Ogawa to a draw. He's a guy who's been able to upset and pick up good victories over the course of his career. Liam Wilson lost to him in the first fight, and, no and he beat Noine. I believe I did a video on this fight. He beat Noine when Noine was grossly out of shape and came in almost 10 pounds overweight. And I believe Wilson actually moved up to fight Navarrete. But in that fight, in a fight Navarrete was supposed to win comfortably against a guy who lacks any type of foot speed, very limited, a puncher without much punch variety, but a good left hook and good timing on his left hook, was able to catch Navarrete in between punches, was able to force him to the back foot, and was able to make him use his lateral movement and largely decrease his effectiveness by a pretty significant amount during the fight. He was able to floor Navarrete very, very hard, and... Even though he ended up getting caught after, you know, after he went down, he was visibly very wobbled by the shot, and he g dug himself into quite a deep hole in the first three or four rounds of the fight. He was able to claw his way back in. Wilson didn't really have the variety, nor the intensity, nor the stamina to be able to stand up to him for long stretches of the fight. But Oscar Valdez, in my opinion, is. One thing about Valdez that I think Navarrete might be able to capitalize on is the fact that he's not a great lateral mover, mover and he does not mount much offense from the outside. Wilson is a little bit more rangy in, I believe, his frame and his stance than Valdez. But Valdez is a much sharper counterpuncher with a much wider array of punches to his arsenal. Therefore, my prediction in this fight is going to be leaning towards Valdez. People came off of Valdez because of the Conce Sal and the Shakur Stevenson fights, and even the you know, Adam Lopez fight to some extent. What people need to realize about Valdez is he is a one-dimensional fighter. He's a guy who is going to fight the same way and is going to express the same intentions in regards to his tactics and his strategy in virtually every single fight, no matter what style or level of opponent he's coming against. He's a guy who's going to look to fight out of a crouch, especially since he's gone with the Reynosos. He's a guy who's going to look to fight out of a crouch and bait his opponents in to overextend and give him opportunities to land his counter left hook. Navarrete is going to do exactly that. And what leans the fight in Valdez's favor is the fact that Navarrete has been making 130 pounds to compensate, I think, for ill discipline. He's looked better and sharper at 126 and 122 pounds. And his punch resistance has also looked better against big punchers. But now that he's moved up, physicality, punching power, and explosiveness have started to get to him, just as they've decreased in him naturally. He's also not somebody who cuts a ton of weight despite his large frame. Even though I think <clears throat> Valdez is going to present opportunities for Navarrete to land because he's not a guy who moves his head very much, uh, I see Navarrete cutting up his face, maybe a little bit causing facial damage. Valdez is susceptible to it. 
I do not see him going 12 rounds unless he's able to break down Valdez quickly. I do not see him going 12 rounds without getting clipped by a counter left hook and eventually getting finished as Valdez is a more uh, a more dynamic and more efficient and more effective and also has better endurance as a finisher than somebody like a Liam Wilson. So my pick in this fight is going to be Oscar Valdez knockout. Round 6 or 7, I think he'll get the stoppage. Somewhere in the mid-rounds. I'm going to say round 6. Let me know what you all think of this fight and have a good one.